For today's painting I've mixed a sepia, which is like a chocolate brown colour, a yellow ochre, yellow on its own, orange, which is basically red and yellow, a red, this is the cadmium red deep, a Payne's grey on its own, and also a light red. It's like a terracotta colour because today's painting is going to be a painting of fire. I have here a small amount of Payne's Grey, but a stronger, darker, small amount squeezed from the tube. And I also have a small amount of sepia here, so we can make some more definite, stronger colours. So let's begin, shall we? I'm going to paint just a little view with a bonfire in it. Perhaps the forest is being cleared of fallen pieces of wood. Let's begin. Let's have a tree trunk. I allow the branches of the tree to just splay outwards. And here, where the branch meets the main trunk of the tree, slight curve shape. That will be enough. Let's make a suggestion of the distant field, shall we, here? And maybe, perhaps, as a suggestion of a pathway coming around the tree. Perhaps it goes off here. Always wider at the front, going smaller at the back. And now here, in this area, will be the fire. So the old branches and pieces of wood have been piled up. Maybe there's one or two logs. On the ground. I think that will probably be enough to begin. So where do we begin? I'm going to use some of my Payne's Grey here, the black looking colour. And I'm using a fine brush. This is a number, a number two fine brush. Just holding the silver furrow of the brush rather like a pencil. Now I'm going to swap over and I'm going to use some of the sepia, the chocolate brown colour. It's this colour. Wiping my brush through to make it a little bit stronger and a little bit darker. The paper that I'm using as always, the paper that I use is Bockingford. It's got a slight texture to it. It's 100% cotton. Just cleaned my brush, clean water, and I'll blend a little bit of this colour together. So we've got the colour slightly diluted now, running together. <laughs> 
Looking good, it's getting there, but I think I need a little bit more of the sepia here. Perhaps one or two more darker black sticks. They almost turn to charcoal. This now needs to be left to dry, so I think I might just do a little bit of colour in the background. Let's begin with some clean water. So I'm just gently wetting the background with some clean water. Three lots of water there. Behind the tree here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my Payne's Grey and I'm going to dilute the Payne's Grey down so we make a really, really pale grey. That's it. It's like a smoky grey for obvious reasons. Just using the flat side of the brush and blending the colour in Perhaps there are some trees in the background here. I might just make the suggestion of a few tree trunks in the distance. So this area here, it could, it could be the smoke in the sky. It could just be a misty background. Some more diluted grey. Going to introduce a tiny touch of the yellow ochre in the background here. Just a few marks of yellow Okay, blend that in a little bit. A little bit of water on my brush here. And the misty trees. Tree trunk going down and a few branches. As you know when I describe in my artwork I always say that all painting is an illusion and this is what we're creating here an illusion of a misty background let's let's create something in the on the land here and the pathway and again I'm just going to gently wet just a small amount of water on my brush here just gently wetting the area ready to absorb the paint. So, this is the sepia here. I only need a very tiny, tiny amount. Look how strong that is. So I'm just not even mixing it around. I'm just using what's on the tip of the brush here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just want the suggestion. Following the shape of the road here, 
wiping through my sepia, just the tip of the sepia, the tip of the brush through the sepia and doing some fine lines following the shape of the pathway. Just blending in here and there a little bit, blending in with my brush. A little bit of the yellow, a little bit of the sepia. Painting this piece of wood, this with the raw sienna, yellow ochre. Let's make a slightly darker shadowy bit here. Bring the eye forward. It's all these little subtle loose aspects to your painting that will make it look believable. Now, let's do something on the tree. So I'm going to start with some diluted sepia. Take some water, take some of this sepia and let's make a lighter version of that. Oh, that's fine. I'm going to paint nearly all of the tree now with this, including the branch. And then what I'm going to do while the tree is still wet, I'm going to swap over to the small brush and I'm just on one side, on the right hand side of my tree, I'm going to introduce some darker colour. So here's some, oh look at that, here's some dark sepia colour. I'm also into, going to introduce some of the Payne's Grey and I'm wiping through the Payne's Grey here so it's very strong. I'm going to just Dab that on, really strong. It's giving a texture to the edge of the tree. We are really uh, nearly at the time to create now the fire. Just have a little bit of colour in the background here, shall we? now the fire. So I'm going to begin with some of the 
hot colours, some of the yellow and the orange, maybe a little bit of the yellow ochre and the red. I've also got here, if you recall, a little bit of light red. I'll put a touch of that in and show you. It's a, it's a terracotta colour, so maybe we'll put a little, little bit of light red within the pieces of wood. Let's start with a lighter, lighter colour. Let's start with some yellow, shall we? Just dab that on. There's some yellow. Now should we change to some orange? A little bit of orange in there. The orange and the yellow coming together. What about a little bit of red? dotting that in because what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use a clean brush plenty of water on my brush and I'm just going to encourage these colors encouraging them up they're going to go past the tree it's beautiful beautiful smoky red and orange and grey. Now the smoke is going to go in front of the tree. So let's take it in front of the tree. It's blending in with the tree. That's beautiful. Smoky grey and brown over the tree. Clean brush again, softening and blending. You can all may almost hear the crackle, the crackle of the fire. So one has to be very careful here. I'm really enjoying painting this and suddenly, suddenly it's become alive to me. The smoke and the fire softly blending upwards. I'm going to make it a little bit darker up here. I'm going to take some of my sepia and some of the Payne's grey. I'm just going to make the smoke a little bit stronger and a little bit darker over the tree. And now, perhaps just a few lines to represent the bark of the tree, to give the tree a little bit of character. Just with the tip of the brush, very fine lines. little bit of shade under the branch of the tree there and then with a clean brush just softly blend that away. I think I need to stop now because if I carry on this is going to be ruined. That is finished. Les touches finales. A tiny little tiny bit of Lifting off a little area and make it lighter, but it's hardly noticeable. Just a slightly lighter area. This can be uh, practiced over and over again until you get the, the feel for it. It it's, should be quite subtle. Let's see now if we take very gently take the tape off the sides. 
I would normally leave this to dry overnight so that the colour bonds to the paper really well. And there we have it. A painting of fire in watercolour. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and happy painting.